Hello, and welcome to the People Chronicles Storied Women. My name is Anna Rose in Gara Milch, and I am your host. I am also the author of Lunch with Lucille. Lunch with Lucille is a story how one woman's life impacted another. And here on Storied Women, we bring women from our community to share their story so we can learn from them as well. And today, my guest, my celebrity guest, as you can, <laughs> as you can see, is Carmen White. Welcome, Carmen. Thank you. And Carmen is currently Miss Pennsylvania International 2018. Now, she's held other titles, but this is, this is what you are currently. I right? am, yes. Okay. And I'm competing for Mrs. International beginning next week. Oh, wow. So yes. where will that be? Charleston, West Virginia. Oh, so how many, how many will compete in that pageant? There are over 60 women from across the country and the world competing for the title of Mrs. International. <laughs> wow, so, wait. Yeah, it's a big, big competition. That's, that's great, though. that's great, yeah. So, and we can talk about that in a little while, but I do want to ask you that question, that what, what is it that you want us to have uh, as our takeaway from today's conversation? I would offer that life is about not making excuses and you are the own author of your own success. Along with that, do not judge a book by its cover. Ah, <laughs> so uh, do you often get judged by your cover? I actually have been judged today by my cover. <laughs> it's, it's a continuing process. I think um, many people are not aware of the adversity each individual faces. Um, you know, when you might meet me, you may not know some of the life experiences that I've had. And when you asked me <laughs> what kind of theme would you have for this discussion, what came to mind was actually a recent disagreement that I had with someone who, in the process of attempting to insult me, called me a fancy lawyer. And um, Because she is a lawyer. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they, were, they were sort of um, intending to indicate that I don't know about life because I'm a lawyer and I'm up high, you know, mm -hmm. in this lofty position. I don't understand what hard work is about. And um, that really, it really <laughs> made me think about how do people really see me? And I understood that uh, I present myself as uh, perhaps something different than my, my previous experiences. And I approach life with a no excuses demeanor. And so that doesn't lend the opportunity for people to know what I've been through. Yeah. So how do you use what you have been through in your, in your regular, you know, in your ordinary life? Thing? Well, in, in ordinary life, I mean, I think it's really important to, to use time management and be very appreciative of, of what you have around you. Um, I am always cognizant of the fact that I grew up in a single parent home and we were very poor. I remember what it's like to um, go to food pantries and get your food for um, everyday life, not just for Thanksgiving. Um, I remember what it's like getting a garbage bag full of other people's clothing, dumping it on the living room floor and picking out what might work for me or for my sisters. I remember what it's like waking up in the morning and our car being gone from outside because it was repossessed or uh, when the utilities were shut off, we had no electric, no water. Or for example, when I came home from school and there were locks on the door because our home was foreclosed upon. And I don't think that individuals um, who may view me now know that I've gone through some of those things, but I use it as fuel. So. <laughs> Though I am a fancy lawyer, <laughs> I, <laughs> I became an attorney for the aspect of service. It was September 7th, 2007 that Kyle Quinn was murdered at Kutztown University yeah, and I was I a student that. there. Yeah, And um, I was so touched, um, the entire Kutztown community was so affected by this that I decided I wanted to be a prosecutor on the spot. I didn't know Kyle, but he was a fellow student and I made that decision, I was going to stand up against evil. I was going to be a voice for justice. And that's what made me decide to go to law school, not to make myself seem better than anybody else, and certainly not for the pay. <laughs> because as a public interest attorney, I, I simply don't earn what you know my counterparts in private practice do earn. But it's always been about service for me. So um, after working as a prosecutor and also as a law clerk for a criminal judge, uh, I worked with domestic violence and rape crisis survivors. Now I work with children who are abused or neglected. And um, I definitely use all my personal experiences uh, growing up in somewhat similar circumstances to help them 
have a safe and healthy environment in which to, to grow and live. That's wonderful. That really is. I mean, that's that's the, the full cycle. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the full cycle. Yeah. And so, I mean, so everything that you have, you have done for the betterment of not just yourself, but of the community. I have, and I think that comes from a place of uh, experiencing such dark places as a kid yeah. myself that I simply don't want to be somebody who perpetuates darkness. I want to be the light in, in whatever way that I can be. And um, now, in the capacity as Mrs. Pennsylvania International, uh, I'm an advocate and a spokesperson for both the American Heart Association for the Go Red for Women campaign, right. and also for sexual assault awareness, specifically the, the Start by Believing campaign. So um, every, <laughs> every aspect of my life is rather service focused. Even um, my second job is as a group fitness instructor, and this too came from a place of you know, growing up not being very healthy and being really cognizant of my weight problem and deciding to make a change and and really that's what it's been about for me if I see something that I don't like I don't sit there and complain about it I see what I can do to change it and so um, that's really what my life focus has been yeah so why do you think people do use excuses and make those judgments I mean I, I really don't know. <laughs> I've, I've tried to figure that out and, and perhaps it's a personality difference. I mean, of course, my sisters and I have grown up in similar circumstances and we've all, you know, three of us gone different directions. Um, so it may be just, uh, you know, a person's individual sense of self and direction, but I honestly don't believe that there is um, in this participation trophy kind of culture, I don't think there is enough focus on hard work. I really don't. So <laughs> that's just my personal perspective. I agree. I, I totally agree. I think, you know, hard work matters. I mean, it, it really does. Builds, it really builds does. character. I mean, it builds a person. And I, and I, and I, I think sometimes when think people think of the pageants, they, they don't understand what really goes into the pageants, no. you know? And so, um, I have also been in a pageant, yes, so um, <laughs> that's how you and I met. That's right. The that's pageant right. circuit. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, um, and then when I got to judge on the pageant circuit, and the there's such a thin line between one woman and the next woman I mean because everybody is doing such great things and to really understand what goes into it and what people what the women put into it they put their heart and soul into this and what they're doing in the community as well you know it's not just standing up on the stage that one day no and and <laughs> and saying something or and walking nicely or something I mean there's so much work put into it you know and and there's such part of the community that uh, and, and I and I always say to myself but people miss that they absolutely miss that. yeah they miss that well it's very easy to view a crown and a sash and say well she she has had everything handed to her yeah and that actually a, sort of a comment along those lines was made to me today in my workplace well you know and the person said well you and I don't have to worry about this we never had to worry about being on our own with you know such and such and I was thinking to myself you actually don't know that about me, but I won't, I won't bring it up. And, and I think that's sort of my second point of not judging a book by its cover. I think I've met some of the most incredible women through yeah. my competition years, and yeah. they're my closest friends. I mean, um, not just doctors and lawyers, but IT professionals, women who are uh, professional performers, women who are extraordinary teachers, and the list goes on and on. Um, and, and I really think that not only do pageants get a bad rap, but professional women, and especially young female attorneys, can be judged sure. very quickly. And I've experienced some of that sexism myself. Um, and I, I think that says a lot about our society that we really need to take a step back and be a little more sensitive to um, a person's perspective and where they're coming from. Yeah. If we just not didn't even uh, think about it in a way, right? You know what I yeah. mean. And so, to, like, take <laughs> don't the make assumptions. Yeah, right. Don't make assumptions. Don't make any judgments. Just let it be. Yeah. I mean, how how glorious would that be if we didn't make assumptions and judgments about all? In mm. because of the children that you work with, I'm sure people are making you know assumptions and judgments about them as well. Certainly. And as we know that, the, and you get to know them, and they're just glorious little human beings. Yes. I mean, so many of them are. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah. 
So I, I, I appreciate you coming in to talk to us. Now, when did you say the pageant was? It's actually next week. Oh, so. gosh. <laughs> yeah, so our pageant, yeah. uh, the Miss Pennsylvania Senior America is next week as well. So, and you're, But and you're in Virginia, though, right? It's West Virginia. West Virginia. Yes, so July 16th to the 21st, I will be in Charleston, West Virginia, competing for the title of Mrs. International. Okay. And if I am um, honored with that opportunity, and of course, I'm excited to just be there and, again, meet other women yeah. from across the world who are polished and professional and passionate about the world around them. Um, but if I am selected as the representative of the class, I will spend the next year advocating, like I said, for the Go Red for Women campaign and the Start by Believing campaign. Um, now, the Start by Believing campaign is sort of, in my opinion, like the second step to the Me Too movement. Uh huh. Yes. Because so many people have come out and identified themselves as survivors of sexual assault or sexual harassment through the Me Too movement. Right. But the conversation sort of has ended there. Well, what do we do when someone identifies themselves? Start by Believing picks up the slack um. because you then understand how you're supposed to respond to someone and you respond by saying I believe you I'm so sorry that happened to you how can I help you and when an individual who has been sexually assaulted has that support from an informal source like a friend or a family member they're much more likely to take advantage of services like counseling or talking to the police or a protective order um, but if they receive a negative response that's actually more detrimental for them than if they had said nothing at all. So I really hope <laughs> for the opportunity oh, great. to talk about this for the next year. I mean, obviously I'll have the chance to still do it as Mrs. Pennsylvania International until March, but um, Mrs. International would give me a wider, wider group of people to be able to address. Yeah, and I think that, and that's such a, a positive message too as well. It so, is. Yeah. It is. So okay. So we have to remember this. So no excuses. No we excuses. Make your own, we make our <laughs> own success. Uh, don't judge a book by its cover, because uh, there's there's so much more. There's so much depth to each of us, to all of us, that we, we need to remember that. And I think that by doing that, we respect each other, and we just it it just makes life a lot easier. Absolutely, it does. I appreciate you coming in today, Carmen, and we all are going to send off really good vibes for you for Thank the next you. week. And hopefully maybe <laughs> when you come back the next time, you will come back as, after your, your world tour. <laughs> <laughs> that would be neat. <laughs> Thanks again for coming in. Thanks for having me. And thank you for listening. Thank you for following Storied Women on The People Chronicles. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The People Chronicles, and you won't miss any stories. These stories are made possible in part by Spring Ridge Financial, Heidelberg Restaurant, Queen City Restaurant, and P.J. Willihan's.